hope you are having a fantastic day. We had such a lovely start to our trip in Cambodia last week in Phen on Phen. Today we have come further down south to Kampot and we are thrilled to start our adventures here. Kampot is home to pretty coastlines and river sites and some world famous peppers. So come along with us and let's spend the next few days looking at life in Cambodia's southernmost province. There are times when you travel that you come across places where time seems to tick at a much slower pace. One such destination is Kampot, a quirky little colonial town in Cambodia. So Kampot basically is the name of the province as well as the city. And to get here you simply take a bus down from Phnom Penh. It takes about four hours and we highly recommend using the giant IBIS buses that we have used a lot. We use them to cross the border from Vietnam to Cambodia as well. And they've just always been very, very comfortable. They have Wi-Fi. It's just a super comfortable journey. Our first excursion in Kampot begins with a 15 kilometer drive east of town. We come here in search of a world-famous spice that comes from the farms of Kampot. Kampot pepper is one of the most famous peppers in the world for its unique and special flavor. So today we have come to a popular spot, which is also a pepper farm. So let's go see what's inside. At La Plantation, they have got free tours in English and French that leave about every half an hour. They also have a restaurant as well as cooking classes. So if you don't want to do a tour, you can also do a cooking class or you can just chill in the restaurant and try some of their really good food with the spices and peppers grown here on the farm. So now we are going to go on one of the free tours of the pepper farm. One of the stops along the tour is in the old pepper farm where we're going to learn a little bit more about how these peppers are harvested and what types of peppers they are. So if you can see around me, these are all peppers, so we're going to go and learn a little bit more about them. From the tour, we learned that each peppercorn on the farm is touched at least once by hand. Some are picked from the plants per bunch. Others are manually removed and checked for errors. There are actually some very strict quality regulations for it to be called a Kampot pepper. Those who do not meet all quality requirements are then sold to the local population and restaurants. La Plantation is also a social project. So this farm here employs 150 people full time and then during harvesting season they employ up to 400 people. Not only do they provide jobs for the community but they also finance one of the local primary schools in the village nearby as well as have English classes every Saturday and Sunday on the farm. We have learned a lot during this tour. I had no clue about how complicated and lengthy the pepper farming process was. It takes about three years from when a pepper tree is planted till when it is ready to be harvested. So during this tour so far, we've gone to learn about the harvesting process, the growing process, and the watering process. I also did not realize how delicate pepper trees were. So all the pepper trees here are watered by hand, and there are a lot of pepper trees. Talking about the first one we're going to taste is green. So green is one of the pepper that is a young age. That I tried to break it for you. It's like moist. So this one we dried and 
So you can use two way. If you don't really like spicy, you can use after cooking. But if you love spicy, just use the whole thing, but use during cooking. Soak in the hot water and then put directly with the food. The whole yeah. grind it. We don't grind it. Salt it fresh. Salt it fresh, yes sir. Them like this. Citrus. Or, but this one, another one. Mm, you can taste the lime. It's a very strong lime taste. So at the end of the pepper farm tour, you get to do a pepper tasting, and it was quite different to any other tastings I've done before, because here they just tell you a little bit about the different peppers or the spices, and then they grind them on a plate, and you just dip your finger and taste it, which was very different and actually a really cool thing to do, because you really then get to taste how each pepper is different and you can appreciate the pepper taste by itself without anything else kind of adding to it. We got to also taste some of the spice mixes that they make here. I think my favorite one has to be the smoky one. Citrus is like smoky. Smoky. Lemon. So you have to put in strong lemon. It's like a barbecue. My favorite. It just had the perfect blend of smokiness, a little bit of sweetness, and then the spiciness came from that pepper, which was really nice because it's not that long lasting spiciness. It's just a bit of a bite to it. I think it would be really nice to put it like on some steaks or even like cauliflower bites, like coated in it, would be really yummy. After the pepper tasting, we have gotten ourselves some iced coffees because it's getting quite hot, as well as some ice cream. Now this ice cream is quite different to any other ice cream. This ice cream has got pepper from the farm in it. So we have gotten two types of ice cream to try. Well, one's actually an ice cream and then one's a sorbet. So we have gotten chocolate ice cream with white campot pepper in it and then a lime sorbet also with campot pepper in it. I have never had ice cream with pepper in it. I never thought to put the two together, so I'm quite interested in what it's going to taste like. I'm going to try the lime sorbet with pepper. The pepper taste isn't actually that strong. It's a very nice lamb sorbet. I think the pepper you get more of, like the chewiness of the peppercorns. Maybe, oh there's an aftertaste of pepper, okay. So when you initially taste it, you don't really get a pepper taste, but you do get an aftertaste of pepper. And now I have the chocolate ice cream with pepper. Mm, it's nice and creamy. Mm. Very nice chocolate taste. The pepper comes through quite a lot stronger in this one. There's also a lot more peppercorns in it. It's quite a bit spicier, but it's good. It goes well with the chocolate. Not too far from the pepper plantation, there is this lake. It is actually called the Secret Lake. So we're going to stop here and have lunch. We found a nice little restaurant that's got like these little bungalows that look out onto the lake. So we're gonna sit here and enjoy a meal. So we've just stopped and gotten some Khmer fried noodles for lunch. One thing you'll notice in Kampot is it's quite slow paced and really relaxing. So a lot of the restaurants have really beautiful views of the landscapes or rivers or here we have a lake right behind us. So it's just a very nice chilled town and we are loving it here so far. After that rather busy morning we have come back to our accommodation to get a little bit of rest and just relax for a little bit but before we go ahead and relax I thought I'd give you a little tour of where we're staying 
It's quite different to compared to places we've stayed at before. It is a tiny house right on the river. So there are lots of these unique little wooden houses right on the river. And the one we're staying in is super cute. Very different to what we've stayed in before. It's got a really nice view. It's really peaceful. And then also on these premises, there is a restaurant and a cafe also right by the river. So it's a perfect place to just go and relax if you want. So, so far we're really enjoying staying here. It's in nature and it's a bit of a escape from the busyness of the city. My favorite part of this property definitely has to be this balcony out here where you can just sit and relax and you can even look at the kayaks that are passing by just next to the river. So the main reason why we chose this location is because it is right on the kayaking trails. And here they even have kayaks that you can use for free, which we think is absolutely great. So it's really nice and peaceful down the rivers. It's quiet. We haven't come across too many other kayakers. Most of the time it is just us and the wind in the trees. It's a really nice way to explore the backwaters. We've gotten to see some birds and we're doing great. We're having a lot of fun. So it's been quite a fun little adventure and there is a bit of a forest around the river as you go through it and you can see a few houses around, wooden decks and some hotels. So a pretty nice ride I would say and we are doing the bigger loop and there are a few different pathways that you can choose and I think when we complete the loop we'll probably meet the bigger river. So we'll see how it goes. Would you say tubing or kayaking is your favorite? Mm, I think tubing because it's less work. Kayaking is like a like a heavy shoulder exercise. So we've just made it to the big river and luckily we made it on time. The sun is just about to go down. So now we're just going to relax and watch the sunset. We have just finished watching the sunset in the main river area and it was really gorgeous. I love sunsets and getting to watch one from a canoe in the middle of like, this big river. It was just beautiful the way the sun glistened off the water. So now we're going to make our way back to our little tiny wooden house and get some rest. It is our first evening here in Campot and we are going to go and get some laundry. Hope you're ready. Laundry is actually a restaurant here and just like their unique name, they also have something really unique on their menu. So let's go see if we can find it. Cambodia has been one of the few countries in Asia where we have had some really good beef burgers. Like so good and they're not the ones from those chain restaurants like Burger King or McDonald's. Just the little shops or little restaurants have been making amazing beef burgers. So this over here is one of their special burgers. It's the Campot Pepper Spicy Burger and we are quite excited to give it a try. Mm. There's a spicy burger. 
It's nice and juicy, and I really like how the pepper complements the beef taste. It's really good. I mean, it's got jalapenos on top, so it makes it extra bit spicy. So I would say, I would definitely say, like, if you're in Campot, you have to come try one of these. Today we have woken up really early and we have just gotten to our first cool spot of the day. These are the salt fields here in Campot. And we have gotten spot on with our timing because as we speak we can actually see one of the farmers working the field behind us. In spite of Cambodia's rough history, the lands in Campot have remained beautiful and fertile. Apart from peppers, Kampot also produces an abundant amount of salt, owing to its location right next to the ocean. So the best time to come and see the salt farms is during the dry seasons, which is December to April. During this time you'll be able to see the farmers on the fields with the salt. You might even be lucky enough to come and see the salt crystals forming. That all depends on when you come in that two week span of whether it's going to be water or salt crystals. And then also if you want to see the farmers, it's best to come early in the morning. So we've been told they start as early as like five in the morning and that is when you'll be able to get them, see them collecting the salt or maintaining the fields. How these salt fields work is they let water in from the ocean and then they let it fill up the field so as you can see the fields now currently have water in so once the water has reached a certain level they block off the ocean flow so that it stays at that level then they leave the water to evaporate in the heat and once it has evaporated then salt crystals are left behind which they then collect I mean they make into big piles like this behind me it's a huge pile of salt so this process normally takes about two weeks and then once they have their big salt pile they then put it in a truck and send it off for production. I've just stopped now at this beautiful statue that you can see behind me. This statue is actually of a Cambodian goddess if I'm not wrong and she is believed to be a protector of people especially in the southern Cambodian region of Kampot and Kep and other provinces. It's a really nice statue actually it's very tall you can see it coming from far away as you're driving along the roads. As we continue up the mountain, we are greeted by some furry friends who live here among the trees. We have just stopped on the way up to look at some monkeys. There are so many little babies, they're really tiny and so cute. So we're busy taking some pictures of them. And then as we've stopped here, we also heard these really interesting birds. Like we haven't seen them before anyway. They look quite tropical. You can actually hear them before you see them because the sound of the 
the sound that their win wings make when they fly. It's quite loud and very different. So we're hoping that as we get up, we'll able to maybe get a video for you and then maybe you can let us know what bird it is because it's something we've never seen before. We have just stopped by at a temple and it is quite different from other temples we've seen. The entire temple, all of the walls and the ceiling have like these carvings in the stone. So these carvings all seem to show like a bit of a story from life in the past. There's like women gathering, there's some men, there's different monks I think on the ceiling. I said the details amazing. Is really beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen a temple like this with so much like carved in the stone detail. It's really cool. So we have made it to the top of the mountain. We're quite high up. I think we're at about 1,000 meters and the views are just absolutely gorgeous. So the mountains go down into these rainforests and behind them, as you can see, is the massive ocean. You just feel like you're on top of the world. And what's amazing is if you look out there, there is actually the island of Phu Quoc, which is in Vietnam. So that is literally the southernmost tip of Cambodia, which is amazing to see. On top of this mountain there is a temple, so the outside of the temple has quite a cool facade because it is quite worn with the weather and it has the weeds and moss growing on it. So a few of the buildings actually are completely abandoned, they're not being used for anything and then there's also a stupa over there and then behind the stupa there's actually a temple where people are still coming to pray. But like the one behind me is abandoned and it has like all buddhas in it that aren't being used anymore so it's really cool to see and it's like up here you have the temples on one side and then on the other side you have the mountains and then you have the ocean so you're just surrounded by like beautiful landscapes all around you i think what i've really enjoyed in this area is many of these uh, spots are quite inconspicuous so from the outside doesn't look like much but once you walk around you discover all these hidden things which are quite cool like you see big buddha statues or some temples even and they all have this abandoned rustic feeling not many people at all which kind of adds to the experience so i have quite enjoyed exploring the bokor national park as we head up further we are surprised to see few more abandoned buildings surrounded by the forest. They stand here dilapidated, the last few remnants from the national parks passed as a French hill station. We have just found the church of the hill station which is now completely abandoned. It looks quite interesting from the outside so let's go see what it looks like on the inside. The inside of the church was a lot smaller than I thought it would be. From the outside it looks quite big, but on the inside they kind of cut it in half and made two rooms at the back. I mean the front part seems to be like the main chapel part, which is quite small. This one still has like a Mary and Jesus inside. It even has an nativity scene, although that nativity scene does not quite look as old as everything else. And the outside building is still in pretty good tact. We have stopped outside what we think might have once been a hospital. There are like some hospital beds and some crutches that you can just see if you look inside. Uh, it's got quite a airy feeling to it. It's a little bit like 
uncomfortable almost. I think out of all the abandoned buildings around here so far, this one has been like the most uncomfortable in feeling. So most of the abandoned buildings that we have come across today were part of Bokor Hill Station which was actually built back in the 1920s by the French when they were here and they built this as a mountain resort town pretty much so that people could come here and escape the heat from the other Cambodian cities in the summers I mean which makes sense because you're so up high that it's the temperature is quite cool and never really gets too hot so I can understand why this would be the ideal spot for a hill station so what happened here was it was initially abandoned by the French uh, during the Indochina war and then later the Khmer Rouge actually took over this place and when they left then it was completely abandoned so since then nobody has moved back here That was it from the National Park. Uh, the abandoned hill station at the top, I must say, was a little bit spooky, but fascinating nonetheless. And just the drive through the park was one of the best drives we've done. It's really, really pretty. So now we're going to get back on the bike and we're going to drive back all the way into Kampot town. some research on Kampot we found that there wasn't that much actually out there on the town part but we have found so far that the town is really tourist friendly there's a huge variety of restaurants it's really pleasant to walk around you're surrounded by mountains trees and the riverside so far it's been really clean so we actually think it's quite a cool spot to check out and we're now going to head further into town to see what else we can find there's not a lot to do in the sleepy town so there is no pressure to fill an itinerary if you choose to live within town. We spend a lot of time in the afternoon taking long walks by the riverside and looking at the cool rustic buildings. A lot of expats head down here to settle in and around Kampot, especially post retirement. What is it about this place? Is it the unique mix of French and Cambodian culture? Is it the cool old architecture? Is it the riverside? Or is it just the nature and escape it provides? Campot has quite a happening cafe scene. So to escape the heat this afternoon, we've come to this lovely little cafe shop where we're going to have an iced coffee, sit back and relax, and I even got a waffle as dessert. It is evening time now and the temperature has cooled down so it is so nice to be out and we are going to go and get some dinner. We have decided to go to good old KFC except this is KFC with a twist because this is Kamai Food Cafe instead. Tonight for dinner we are having a local Cambodian dish. It is called Lok Lak. We have beef Lok Lak with us tonight. So from my understanding it is like a beef stir fry and then it comes with rice and a fried egg. So this is actually our first time trying Lok Lak. We have seen that it's quite a popular dish here in Cambodia so we're very excited to give it a go. Alright let me give it a try. It's got a bit of a sweetness to it and then excuse me, that spiciness from the pepper like that bite. It reminds me a little bit of like pepper steak pie, the filling in that. The beef's really nicely cooked. It's good, I enjoy it. I would definitely recommend you give it a try. So if you're in Kampot, make your way to KFC. It's pretty good. 
so that's it from us in Campot. We hope you enjoyed traveling here with us. It turned out to be so much better than we expected. Yeah, we quite enjoyed the slow-paced nature of the city and it was nice to do something different here, whether it was learning about the peppers or exploring the abandoned hill station or going kayaking down the river. We definitely think it will soon be one of Cambodia's top destinations. So if you're planning to travel to Cambodia, make sure you head down here and spend a few days. And thank you so much again for watching our videos. We truly appreciate it. In our next video, we are going to make our way to another unique destination in Cambodia. So until then, take care and stay tuned. Bye! We have just finished watching the sunset at the main river and it was absolutely gorgeous. Sorry, sorry. And now we're going to crash.